What's up, y'all? This is DJ Kenny Parker, DJ and producer for KRS-One slash Boogie Down Productions, and today I'm here with another story. Today's story is going to be part of my series that I'm calling Epic Fails. Over the course of the next few weeks, I'm going to get into a few things that went wrong during my journey with BDP. I guess you could sort of call it like bloopers. Actually, you could sort of count my PM Dawn video that I posted a few months back as the first installment of Epic Fails, because obviously things didn't go according to plan. Before we get started, a few people have been asking me, who is the guy in this picture that I have up here on my wall that's in all of my videos? That guy's name is Jimmy Spicer. He is the MC who made the record The Adventures of Super Rhymes in 1980. That song, as I mentioned in my book, my brother's name is Kenny, pick up the book. If you didn't get it yet, I'll put the link in the description below. That song was so important to both myself and my brother when we were little kids. That song blew our minds, and um, I was fortunate enough to meet Jimmy Spicer right before he passed, and I, got to, I was able to take this picture. Shout out to my boy Zulu Jeff for making that happen. And rest in peace to Super Rhymes, Jimmy Spicer. The picture I have over here, which you can't really see because there's always a light shining in it, is a picture of me and the iconic Grandmaster Flash, who is my DJ hero. So these are two guys that were very influential to me, so I have them up there all the time for inspiration. Okay, let's get started. I was going through storage, and I was able to pull up this. It's a tour laminate from the Material Love Tour. Actually, that was the name of the song, Love's Gonna Get You, on the Edutainment album released in 1990. 1990 was my first year as the DJ of Boogie Down Productions, and a lot was going on that year. We were so busy. We were recording the Edutainment album, and at the same time, we were recording Boogie Down Productions live hardcore worldwide video and album. BDP Live was supposed to be the very first long-form hip-hop video ever released. But due to time constraints, the two live crew actually beat us by maybe a month. Shout out to the two live crew. So BDP's live album ended up being second by a hair. But um, I'm going to get into that album a little later on. But both of those albums were happening at the same time. Plus, we were touring nonstop. So every day was practically something new to do. During the spring summer of 1990, an historic event happened. The iconic civil rights leader from South Africa, Nelson Mandela, was released from prison. As we all know, he spent 27 years in a South African jail protesting apartheid. Upon his release, Nelson Mandela went on what he called a freedom tour. And one of his first stops was New York City. A giant three-day celebration was planned in New York for Nelson Mandela's arrival, including a ticket tape parade, meeting with the mayor and all kind of political leaders, and finally, a concert in Yankee Stadium. Now, this particular concert was special. At that time, there hadn't been a lot of musical concerts at Yankee Stadium. Only the most gigantic acts in all of music got to perform there. But for Nelson Mandela to do a speech, you needed a place huge like Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium held 55,000, and it was sold out to hear Nelson Mandela do his first speech since he was free from 27 years in prison. The organizers of the event pulled together some of the top artists of the day. They had artists ranging from gospel, jazz, funk, R&B, and surprisingly, hip-hop. Now, in 1990, there was only a few groups 
that would be considered conscious enough to perform at a venue with Nelson Mandela as the headliner. Lo and behold, Boogie Down Productions featuring KRS-One was asked to perform at the speech and concert. Wow! As you can imagine, we were all super excited. I mean, Nelson Mandela was being mentioned right up there with Martin Luther King and Gandhi. On the day of the concert, we were super excited. I do believe, and someone might have to fact check me on this. I tried to look this up, but there wasn't much information. I do believe that in 1990, Boogie Down Productions was the first rap act to perform at Yankee Stadium. I could be wrong about this, but I think I'm correct. If so, that would make me the first DJ to ever perform at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Let's go. What I remember about the concert was it was a bright, sunny day. There were a lot of politicians and dignitaries there and a lot of security. I remember the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who at that time was also a politician, walked right past me. He had about 10 security people with him, looked like Secret Service. I was so nervous that I actually held my breath when Jesse Jackson walked past me because I didn't want to make any sudden moves and have to give the Secret Service any reason to have to pull out on me. <laughs> For real. As the day progressed, we chilled out in our dressing room, checked out some of the festivities, and waited for our time to go on, which was closer to when Nelson Mandela was going to do his speech. Perfect. What could go wrong? As some of you might know, and some of you might not know, when you're dealing with live concerts, two things happen. One, groups always go on longer than they're supposed to and run over time, which affects the next group that's supposed to go on after them. Two, when you have big arenas, they have union workers there and they have a shutoff time that the place has to be closed no matter what. They will cut you off in the middle of your show. When it's time for these lights to go out, they will cut the sound and cut the lights and it's over. That's union rules. So, as the time gets closer for us to go on, all of a sudden we get the word that time is getting late, so they're pushing Boogie Down Productions to after Nelson Mandela speaks. What? This was a disaster. I remember Chris being furious. As it turned out, one of the main organizers of the event was the civil rights legend himself, Mr. Harry Belafonte. And I remember seeing Harry Belafonte walking about 20 feet in front of us in the backstage area. Chris saw him as well. For some of you that don't know, Karis One is my brother and I call him Chris. So for the sake of this video, sometimes I might mention Chris, but that's also Karis One. Okay, so Chris sees Harry Belafonte as well, walking about 20 feet away, and he starts yelling at him, Harry, Harry, like that. And I'm thinking to myself, yo, you can't call Mr. Belafonte Harry? But Chris was going, Harry, Harry, like that. And Mr. Belafonte turns around, sees Chris, and he stops. So Chris walks over to them and they start speaking. So I'm eavesdropping on the conversation, of course. And Chris is saying to Mr. Belafonte, Harry, we can't go on after Nelson Mandela. Once Nelson Mandela speaks, that's the end of the night. This is about freedom and apartheid. Nobody wants to hear music after Nelson Mandela speaks. Mr. Belafonte says, well, Chris, I agree with you. But we run out of time. The only way that you can go on before Nelson Mandela is if the headliner agrees to shorten their time to give you more time to perform. As it turned out, the headliner of the night was the folk singer Tracy Chapman. 
Y'all remember her from the song, She's got a fast car. I've got a ticket to take it anywhere. <laughs> Something like that. It was a big song in 1990. So the promoters of the show asked Tracy Chapman if she would shorten her time so Boogie Down Productions could go on. She said, no, I'm doing my full set. Which meant Boogie Down Productions will have to go on after Nelson Mandela. Disaster. Not long after, it was time for Nelson Mandela. Mayor Dinkins came on stage. The First Lady was on stage. Jesse Jackson was on stage. All kind of politicians. Nelson Mandela came out. He did a speech. Everybody went crazy. 55,000 people screaming. They gave him a Yankee jacket and a Yankee hat. It was a whole production, as it should be. I was able to locate rough video footage of Nelson Mandela's speech. As you can see to the left-hand side of the screen is my DJ setup right next to Nelson Mandela. Those silver cases that you can see is my actual setup. They didn't even get a chance to move our setup over because time was going by that fast. Nelson Mandela had to go right at that moment. So he did his whole speech with my DJ set up right next to him. After the show, almost 55,000 people headed for the door. Luckily, in the midst of those 55,000 people was about 6,000 hip hop heads. So after the majority of the people left, 6,000 people were still in the arena waiting to see BDP. Now, these 6,000 people were spread out all over Yankee Stadium, so it looked crazy. So what security did was opened up the field and let all the people come down to the field right in front of the stage. So now you got 6,000 people right in front of the stage. That's a nice crowd. That's about the size of an amphitheater. When we saw those 6,000 people in front of the stage, we was like, oh, all isn't lost. Let's get it. We came out, the crowd went crazy, and we proceeded to hit them with song after song. They knew every word. It turned into a wild hip-hop event. Two things I remember specifically about that night was, one, the actor Malcolm Jamal Warner from the number one rated show, The Cosby Show, was sitting right there at the side of the stage next to the speaker. He was a hip-hop head and knew every word to every BDP song, which was dope. Two, the highlight of the night was when our new single, Love's Gonna Get You, dropped in Yankee Stadium. The crowd went crazy and sung the whole song. It was dope. One of the highlights of my life. And I got to throw the record on in front of these people in Yankee Stadium that night, which could have been a disaster, which should have been a disaster, turned out pretty cool, actually. After that, the show was over. Yankee Stadium was closed. Everybody went home. Ironically, a few weeks later, we were called again to perform for Nelson Mandela at Oakland Stadium in California. Once again, over 50,000 people were there, nice sunny day, and this time there was enough time for BDP to go on before Nelson Mandela spoke. Finally, to wrap it up, we finally got to perform one more time for Nelson Mandela on Arsenio Hall. This time, I was rocking an SP-1200 live on television. What could go wrong? <laughs> Thankfully, nothing. The show went smooth, and that was the last time that we got to perform for Nelson Mandela. So that's the story. I hope you guys enjoyed my first installment of Epic Fails. I got a few more of them coming, so stay tuned, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.